Welcome to a place like no other, Barking Riverside. I've come out east to explore the great new development of Barking Riverside. The question is, where is it? I mean, that's the station. I've just come on the train from Leytonstone on the overground. They've extended it from Barking to Barking Riverside, this brand new station, which opened in 2022. Very impressive. Got the transport nerds really excited. I think Jeff Marshall came and did a video on it. But the development of Barking Riverside, the Barcelona on Thames that they've been talking about all this time. All I can see is piles of rubble and pylons. Where is it? Where are these 10,000 people going to live? And not just live, live differently. Rather than me try and recap what I've read on their website, these boards here that you find outside the station are a great place to see what the aspirations are of the people developing it or certainly what the what the marketing the spiel is what the pitch is for the area and also it is pointing the way to where i think i want to go so it says designed with purpose powered by people it's a place like no other that's a marketing tagline as we can all spot that can't we people thrive infrastructure empowers and community spirit soars it's interesting isn't it that people get paid to write this i'm not criticizing it by the way i'm not being snarky but um that would have been really chewed over multiple times and gone through committees and all sorts of stages of review. Everyone lives with a deep sense of purpose, pride and possibility. These are all really great things, aren't they? I mean, let's hope that is the case. I have no doubt that the copywriter thoroughly believes that. Possibly someone who has studied situationism certainly studied placemaking or would have immersed themselves in that for sure and you know i like to think hopefully our town planners also aspire to those things as well so you know let's start with a positive frame of mind and here's the key here's the key bit of information here barking riverside so this is a development by the mayor of london the uh, greater london authority in l and q that's london and quadrant they're a housing provider and i think they do actually do sort of uh, affordable housing or to some degree do affordable housing and I think this is a mixed development so there's a degree of both there's a, be a certain amount of social housing then there'll be some sort of housing association housing which may be slightly different the rents are a bit higher there'll be tiers anyway some shared ownership and some just completely private ownership stuff the only thing I will say is it's rare to find something where they wouldn't say <laughs> all those things but again they're all positive aspirations um, and bearing in mind that this isn't a, you know, a, just a big private development trying to make loads of money, um, local authorities are really good at losing money, so I very much doubt they'll, they'll make any money. And it says, Barking Riverside is taking shape, state-of-the-art infrastructure. This is really what I'm interested in, actually, is this. And I, I'm not here to critique, really. I don't really have the tools to do that, I'm afraid. I'm not schooled on development and all the rest of it here to document that's what i'm really interested in is documenting new parts of london taking shape really an act of just a little repertage and we were down here actually i'm not sure if i filmed it though actually when i walked along the gorsebrook which i'll link to below and the gorsebrook comes along the very edge of the barking riverside development and it got dark we got to sunset so i walked through here and i couldn't get the train but what it did what it did highlight to me actually is quite how isolated this area uh, was and still can be when the train isn't running because you know it's a bus ride to Barking that goes all through the houses it's not a particularly regular bus service and then a train from Barking so this train station is kind of vital to this community really working as a connector community and there's also um, the uber boats the sort of ferry service as well which will connect this community here to central London really quite quickly so uh, yeah let's go for a stroll around it says river footpath we came along that I'm I'm quite excited about this today so this is built on the site of a former power station Barking power station where lots of pylons 
fed into that power station. The ones we can still see there now, I, I suppose they might be from the old power station. And there is still an enormous electricity substation here. And of course, this would have originally, before the power station, been tidal floodplain, really. So this is considered to be a massive brownfield development, development built on former industrial land. Barking itself, of course, is an ancient part of, well, I say part of London, I suppose lots of you would be screaming out, no, it's not, it's Essex, West Essex. I mean, you know, call it what you will, but it certainly is Greater London today. And this is one of Greater London's oldest areas in many ways. Uphall Camp, the ancient Uphall Camp, predates the Roman settlement of London. The Romans built their city further up the river. Is that down the river, up the river? You know what I mean. <laughs> further away from the sea because there was already a significant development here on the banks of the River Roding at Uphall Camp there. And then later on Barking Abbey becomes a major powerhouse in medieval London, early medieval London, Anglo-Saxon London. I mean, parts of the big sort of uh, commercial, successful, successful is a, the wrong word to use, but you know what I mean the more established parts of London would have been deeply subservient to Barking. Barking would have been the kind of the place to be. Barking Abbey, a source of, of wealth and learning and influence, political, intellectual, financial. Um, so Barking's got some really deep heritage. This is a new add-on to Barking, a whole new annex of Barking. 10,000 people are going to be living here, or they're going to be homes for 10,000 people. So it's a significant extension of Barking which is to the west of here. It is really exciting to capture these moments when these new developments are taking shape. I must admit, I can't think of many that have sprung out of the marsh mud in quite the same way as this that I've seen. I have to admit, I thought it was a lot more um, developed than this. I thought it was far nearer completion than it seems to be. I, I wouldn't like to speculate on uh, the percentage which is done, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I met someone in the red line in Leightonstone who lived out here like two or three years ago. So I thought it would have been pretty much finished by now. What I like about this, we've gone from a place to belong to truly a place to belong. So the nearer we've got, the more emphasis there is on it being a place to belong. Maybe that's, maybe that's true. What was interesting there, I don't know if you saw at that point, I oh, know you wouldn't have done because my camera was pointing that way, is a security car slowly drove past me back there. That would be interesting to see if I get stopped filming. That would be really interesting because um, if it's a public highway, I'm perfectly within my rights to film. If it's private property, they technically can stop me, um, which will be interesting. Ripplegate Walk, that probably reflects some aspect of the local history, doesn't it? Because there's Ripple Road. I'm not entirely sure what the Ripple refers to, actually. There might be something to look up. This is a... Is it a generous offer? There's got to be a catch, but there's an offer here from Bellway Homes. They'll pay a £1,000 a month towards your mortgage for up to two years. Only available on selected homes. Interesting. <laughs> So here I think we're uh, hitting the very edge of the development because they actually haven't built as much of it as I thought they had. 
I went to speak to the fella in the sales office back there, the Bellway sales office. He was incredibly helpful, a really lovely fella. If Bellway Homes see this, that fella is top salesman. I nearly bought a flat. I'm not even looking for one. Anyway, he told me that my perception of it being mostly complete, <laughs> completely wrong. I think they built something like only a relatively small portion of the 10,000 homes that will be built here. I think they've done phase one and two and they're sort of starting on phase three and there's something like seven phases. Some of it obviously isn't all Bellway. The London and Quadrant stuff is social. So it's social housing and shared ownership and they do the private sales. Um, so it's gonna, it will take a while to take, to fully develop, but the sort of like the roots of the kind of community building aspect are taking shape here. And you've certainly got a 24 hour bus, obviously got the, the brand new station with four trains an hour, but it, yeah, it is still very much taking place. And there's gonna be a whole kind of like downtown style area right on the riverfront with the big kind of higher uh, sort of like Canary Wharf style blocks, if you like. So really this is a lot more, na <laughs> a lot more nascent than I thought it was, which is actually quite a relief because I was thinking that I was sort of like, I felt a sort of dereliction of duty that I hadn't been down here to document this more thoroughly. And it kind of joins the list of a few, quite a few others that we've been to, like the city island development, the island gardens development. So this is interesting here. You've got the uh, ecology center, the wilds ecology center. And there's this little nature reserve down here. I was actually invited to look at one. I think it might have been this one here and I should have taken them up on the invitation, but maybe I will do that later when there's more being built here. So I had a nice little chat with the security guards who were driving around. They were very helpful indeed, actually. They said they've been here since it began. So it's been going for a while. This development has been ongoing so far for like over six years and it will go on for at least another 12. Um, but they recommended going down to the jetty and he says, you see seals all the time down there on the river, particularly early in the morning, which is lovely. I really want to see some seals in the Thames. I'm desperate to see that. Obviously, I don't think I'll see them at sunset, but who knows? So that's what we'll do. There's not a lot else to see in terms of the built environment, but we'll loop round and we'll go down to that jetty and then it will be sunset. Just on the other side of the station, and that's the way down to the jetty and down to the river. 10 minutes before sunset, or maybe five minutes before sunset, it's after four o'clock, 10 past four. And this is a good view looking back to Fields Quarters. Is it Fields Quarters? Of course, this land between here and there will all be built upon eventually. At the moment, they've got an uninterrupted view across the Thames to Plumstead Marshes and Linnae Abbey and Bostall Woods, but that will soon be filled in, I would have thought, at some point over the next five to 10 years. It always feels like such an amazing treat to get a Thames sunset. It's the greatest gift for a Londoner. It's amazing to look back from this jetty here, to look back from the river, out in the river, and to think that over the next 10 years, this view here will be filled in with great big tower blocks. Massive tall buildings will line the foreshore here with lower rise buildings filling in the gaps behind. We're very fortunate to be able to capture it at this moment come down here and see it whilst it's like this. Still even got some old shipping containers there along the old wharf, which is fantastic. I love looking out along this wide expanse of the Thames here. It really does feel when you look east, like you're looking out towards the sea. The sea is very much a possibility from here. It's great to get down close to the water here, right at the end of the jetty, where you will board the, uh, the Thames Clipper service. 20 minutes to Canary Wharf. 
So here, with the waves lapping up against the jetty, is the perfect place to end our walk around Barking Riverside, our exploration of Barking Riverside, a community coming into being, which is always an incredible moment to capture. I feel like it's a real privilege to be able to come and, and do this and, and witness these moments in transition in the story of London, another page. Is it even a page? I guess it is a page or certainly, you know, a few paragraphs in the story of this amazing city. Thank you so much for joining me. What a, what a beautiful afternoon it's been. Thank you so much to my wonderful supporters on Patreon and to the members of the channel here on YouTube. Anyway, it seems apt stood by the water, I should say. See you on the next walk, wherever that may be, because I feel like I want to board a boat and take off like Conrad deep, deep, deep into the Congo. Was it the Congo Conrad when it was, wasn't it? And he set off from the Thames just up the way there. So, I mean, who knows?